Welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Happy Thursday, everyone. It's Friday, Junior. Whoop, whoop. Um, I hope you're having a great week. I um, hope everything is going good for you today. All right, so let's talk. So we are now going to pick up a discussion that we had probably like two, three weeks ago. Funny thing is that um, I probably have tried to record this episode um, like three or four times. Uh, I did one time and um, there were some technical difficulties that um, we found in editing. And then I've tried to record it maybe uh, <laughs> three, two other times where the internet has, uh, Wi-Fi has gone out. Um, and so let's, here's hoping that the fourth time is charm. Okay. I must really have some great nuggets to give you because something's trying to stop me. Okay. All right. So the last time we talked about um, when you're in the interview process and you're dating essentially the company representative, right? During that interview process, everyone is giddy. Everyone's full of bliss. Everyone's excited about the other person and you're trying to impress each other equally. So what I did is I gave you five things that you should ask or do um, when you're in the interview process, just to make sure, you know, you've done the due diligence um, before you decide to enter into a partnership with a new company. All right. Number one was, what is the company's approach to strategic planning? Yep. You just want to know, like, how do you get to a place of um, creating priorities, right? Is there a process that you go through? Are there pillars that all the teams and groups ladder up to? So just understanding that, like what guardrails are in place when someone has an idea or do we just stop everything and say, oh, we've got a new idea we need to work on. All right, number two is collaboration. Everybody talks about it. You hear it on the jobs. Can you cross-functionally work with other teams? But what does it really look like in this environment? So you want to ask specific questions about their process for collaboration and what it looks like. All right, number three is culture. This will allow you to really dig beneath the layers to see the true identity of the company and its people. So I would say outside of the group of people who you are interviewing with, maybe ask to speak to some people in other areas. And then also if you're talking, you know, if you're working with the HR recruiter, maybe ask to speak to someone else in HR just to get a feel as well if they're not already in your interview um, docket. And then lastly, I would say go to LinkedIn and find people who maybe worked at the company previously and maybe see if they'll give you 20, 30 minutes to just chat about their experience. All right, number four is what role does executive leadership play in the day-to-day? -day? So you just want to understand, like, first of all, what is the structure, right? So you've got most times at a company, you might have CEO. Some companies might have a president in the middle, and then you've got like other executive leaders. Um, so you just want to understand, I mean, what you're trying to get to is like, how do they let their people lead? How are they... Um, Micromanagers, do they trust their people? That's essentially what you're trying to get as a takeaway. And then lastly, how do they handle adversity? So does everybody crumple under pressure? <laughs> do people start turning on one another? Like you just want to understand, like, and then you want to ask, like, for examples of when you've had to deal with like adversity. And then last, a bonus is what is the flex remote hybrid policy? You know, you just want to understand that. I mean. For maybe the last two years, it was, you know, people just trying to understand, like, is it going to be hybrid? Am I going to have to come in there? Um, how do I keep the balance of the life that I created when we were in the pandemic and I had more free time, more work-life balance? Um, and then now I think with remote, a lot of uh, places that maybe were re like in person, and then they went to remote, full-time remote. A lot of those companies are still trying to figure out ways to like bring people into the office to collaborate. So I think it's just important for you to like ask those questions so you understand like what are the expectations? Um, you know, if you're if you're taking a job and say they're based somewhere else that's not in your hometown, how often am I gonna have to travel? Um, is that gonna change? So I think just asking all those questions up front will help you make the best decision for yourself. So 
And those were the five plus your bonus. Um, these uh, things are just designed to help you like go ahead and root out right the good, the bad, and the awkward, and for you to ultimately make a great decision for yourself and for the company also um, to make the right decision for them. All right, so let's move on. All right, uh, so today we are going to talk about, say if you, maybe you didn't have that list of things to ask, right? And, um, you know, you went ahead. Maybe you did ask some really good questions during the interview process and you said yes. You said yes, you're in a relationship and now you're like, mm, I don't know, y'all. <laughs> I don't think this is working. Okay. First of all, what I want to say is that that's okay. Um, I think a lot of times uh, people feel like they have to commit this certain amount of time to something. When in reality, I think sometimes you just know what you know, right? Sometimes just your intuition tells you that mm, maybe this isn't the best fit for me. And I think that I have found that when people are able to get to that sooner than later, it makes it a lot easier for you to step away from then when you stay somewhere and you're not really happy, but you keep staying out of loyalty and hoping that it will get better. I tend to just think sometimes in the first six to nine months, you sort of know. You know whether this is like a two-year gig or a five-year gig or like a, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to make it to a year um, gig. <laughs> So first of all, I just want to say to anybody who may be in a situation where you're thinking about leaving and you might be saying, well, I've only been there X amount of, you know, I haven't been there six months yet or haven't been there a year. It's okay. Like, don't allow for anybody to shame you for doing what you feel is right for you, because ultimately nobody can live your life. And it's about what makes you happy. And chances are, if you're not happy doing something, then it's going to show in your work and your company is not going to be happy. So it's probably going to get to a place of where you may um, leave anyway. But in this case, you can leave on your own terms. All right. So just want to get that out of the way. Uh, so the first thing, if you are someone right now and you're saying like, yep, I've already secured a new job. I'm I've put in my notice or I'm heading towards putting in my notice. Or if you're somebody who's just saying, mm, I think I want to start looking. The first thing you need to do in either situation is make a plan. Make a plan before you leave a job. If you're thinking about, you know, if you want a new job, make a plan to find a job before you leave that job. <laughs> I don't really recommend leaving a job without a job. I mean, hey, if you've got a lot of savings stored up and you're not going to have to be stressed out about financial financial and money and all that, hey, then do what you need to do. But if you're someone who is, you know, if you're responsible for taking care of yourself, right, and you haven't been able to necessarily save up, like, what do they say, six months of your salary, like you should save um, for emergencies, right? Although I don't necessarily know that like one to quit your job is that said emergency, but hey, each situation is different. So again, no, no shame here. Um, you just want to make a plan. So if you're somebody who's going to start the job search, make a plan, make a list of things that are non-negotiables for you and things that you want in your next opportunity. Uh, I think that is really important. And then if you're someone who is transitioning out, make sure that you put together a nice transition plan for those who will be left after you leave to just make sure that it's clear for everyone and that you've got something that you can walk everybody through as you begin to exit the business and they begin to pick up your task. Can't say enough, like I've left jobs and went to new jobs and they've always created like a great transition plan. Now, if people don't listen when you're trying to transition them and they're not getting it, that is not your fault. Um, <laughs> I've had several jobs that like I've airtight transition plan and still, you know, soon the, the Monday that comes when you're out of the first day you're out of the office and people are texting you saying, do you have a minute? I was just wondering, you know, because I think too, like, I guess ultimately they're still processing the fact that you're not going to be there and you're ready to move on. So just make sure you have a plan either way. And um, <laughs> and try to make things as seamless as they can be on both sides. All right, number two, make a new budget. So 
if you are someone who's thinking, maybe I'm going to want to transition out of this job, this is maybe where that saving up six months of salary can come into play, right? Um, you may have to cut back on some things, maybe not do some things that you know that you normally do in order to just save a little bit so that you can plan for like your transition. Um, and then also, if you're getting a new job and you may be getting more money, I think you still want to plan, right? You want to plan so that you don't have to live to that salary because you got that salary, right? Um, so I think it's just important to make sure you look at your um, financial plans. And also too, um, one thing I want to say with the making the budget, right, is also just like the transition. I don't know about you, but with my last two jobs, I've taken off like two weeks in between jobs. I think I had three weeks off this last time. It is so awesome to be able to just like not to be tied to a job, not be tied to an email or a Teams chat message, a Slack message, just to really have that time to decompress because that first week alone, you're still kind of getting your old job out of your system. And people are like, texting you, trying to ask you questions. And then that second week for me personally, I know it was like, whew, okay, now I can like enjoy the next week of not having anything to do. And then that third week was where like I was able to start shifting my mindset to like get ready for the new opportunity. And I was really only able to do that because I, you know, had worked within my budget and I was planning for that. Um, and also too, like I had vacation days that I was going to get paid for. So understanding like the benefits you have and the budget, the money that you have can help you. And I think like if we're able to like take that break in between jobs and I know like not everybody's going to be able to take a three week break, but if you could at least even take a week, a week in between, like it would do you wonders. All right. Number three, archive and save your work samples, right? So this is something that you should be doing now. So it's not necessarily something that you should do when you're like leaving a job or, you know, plan to leave a job, but you should also always be saving like samples of the work that you put together because I mean, you're building your portfolio. So then that way, when you do get in a pinch and you're like, oh my God, like I want out of here. Then you're trying to like find all the things and I, I got to find my stuff. Like where are my files? So just monthly, I would say, um, monthly, you should just plan to like upload things to like either your Dropbox or uh, Google Drive or USB so that you have your portfolio and then just start building. You can build a portfolio without, you know, looking for a job, just like built it in the background so that it's already like happening. And I find like it's so much easier to do that than to get to that place of like, I need to find a new job and you want out. And then you're like trying to do everything at once. And most times you're like frazzled and you can't find all the things. So just start grabbing those things now. All right, uh, number four, start the cleanup process. <laughs> so if you are someone that's in office, right, and you've got photos and um, artwork and lots of things, I mean, once you sort of get to a place to where you're like, uh, maybe I'm going to start looking, just start taking things home a little bit at a time. I mean, so my last in-office job um prior to okay two jobs ago I just started taking home a few things like every week usually I was there like either earlier than everybody or I was there at the end so I just started putting a little few things in my bag and I left just enough that it wasn't too noticeable that like I didn't have all those photos but then you just start to like because I think if you're going to start like to take yourself away from the process, you have to start like taking your stuff away. The longer you're like sitting in like comfort of like all of my things that I brought from home and this office feels like home too, then you're never really going to make that move to like actually take a leap and look for a new job. All right. And then number five is pack your patience because the timing is never going to seem like the right timing, right? So 
once you decide that you want to leave your job, um, I mean, I don't know. Didn't happen for me, but I also believe that like God's timing for me is, and what he has for me is for me and it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. But I would definitely say that um, when you start looking for a job, you, you know, you have to just assume that like, you're not going to get a job like tomorrow. I don't know, maybe, maybe you will, you might be lucky, but I actually was looking for a job. So let's say I started looking for, I started my job that I'm in now last May in 2022. I started looking for a job actually in 2020. <laughs> actually, I was looking for a job at the beginning of 2020 and was on some interviews and then COVID happened. And so then, um, you know, those jobs were put on hold and then I had to just sort of like wait it out. And then I started back up that November. And so then I had some interviews. I even got offered a job by um, the end of like 2020, a job that I ended up not taking. But then in 2021, I will say for me, it was great because it just gave me like a, a good boost to my confidence that, yeah, like people will hire you and you don't have to, you know, and you didn't have to settle. You didn't have to take that job. It just ultimately like the job didn't feel right to me. Like there was just something that felt like red flags for me. Um, and it was partially because I was asking a lot of the questions on this list here and some more. Um, so in 2021, I probably spent that whole year like interviewing and talking to different people about jobs. And it was very frustrating. I mean, I had a box, um, my glow box, as I call it. Um, and I would put in like the names of um, places that I applied to. And then uh, then when I would hear back, some places, obviously, you don't always hear back. So I do appreciate when someone like sends me a note back to say like, you know, actually, we decided to go with someone else. And then also, I would caution you as you're as you're moving towards like looking for a new job and you're in that process to like reframe the um what you might call a rejection. Um, because at first I used to like write down a list of rejections. I was like, oh, this is a rejection. For me, I reframed it to say that, you know, oh, well, those are just things and opportunities that God felt like I was, they weren't good enough for me. So, you know, just reframe it for whatever you need for it to be and don't see it as a rejection. Um, it's just not the right opportunity. It's not the best opportunity for you. And I would think that you want the best that there is for you and the right fit and the right opportunity for yourself. So, yeah, so like I, so I like interviewed like the entirety um, with different people in 2021. I was actually on like the world's longest interview with the job company from like June to like October. And then this job blew up and it was like a whole mess um, that I won't talk about here, but this company was in the news for something. So it was like, oh, wow. And I was really sad at the time when they like sort of fell off and stopped because I was really close to the end. I had interviewed with like the CEO, the COO, like all the people who were going to be my peer, like, and I was, it was like a shoe in, like I was just doing the final things and knew that like, I was going to get this opportunity until, you know, it just abruptly was put on hold. And then the next year I found out like everything that had happened and why. So I was really thankful to God that the opportunity didn't come because probably wouldn't be with that company now anyway. So all I'm saying is like, pack your patience, do your due diligence, ask the right questions, stay firm in the things that matter to you, you know, just um, do the interviews, ask the right questions. Um, you don't have to, you know, jump at the first opportunity because if that one doesn't work out, trust me, there'll be more for you. All right. So that is all five. So just quickly the recap, one, uh, make sure you have a plan, two, make a new budget, assess the budget, three, save your work samples, four, start the cleanup process, and five, um, you know, don't stress about the timing, you know, the timing, it'll be perfect when the time is right, the perfect timing and the perfect opportunity will align, but don't stress about the timing. Okay, so before I go, you can head over to glowupgirl.com. You can ask us previous episodes, podcast episodes, resources, and more. Um, and also, 
uh, you can now join us on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, so join us over on Patreon and unlock your potential with the Glow Getter membership. It's only $5 a month to subscribe. Um, when you join the community, uh, you'll gain access to exclusive career tips, guidance, resources, and so much more. Everything that I work on and that I create um, and upload there is really designed to help you create a career and a life that you can love. So if you're someone that's just starting out or you're looking to level up, this membership is designed to help you reach new heights and glow up. So check the links in the show notes, the link actually, um, and go over there and subscribe. $5, people, $5. It'll be almost like me virtually coaching you without you having to like make a higher commitment and you'll get so much more. Like I'm trying to pack this with so much information. And also if there's anything, you know, when you sign up and join the community, as I know you're going to do, because I know I can count on you. Um, if there's anything that you want me to cover there um, in our special space, in our special community, I'm definitely uh, willing to do that. All right. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to you, everyone out there for taking time out of your day to uh, pop in and listen. Um, share your thoughts with me. Send me a DM um, over at on Instagram. I'm at Glow Up Girl. And also you can email me at hello at Glow Up Girl as well. So that's it, my friends. I will see you all next week with a new episode, um, another great, fabulous interview. Um, and then we'll be back with the career um, series episode soon. So until next time, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone. <laughs>